the sacrifice of praise which we are part of to glorify and to worship God and to thank him for so many blessings that he bestows upon us. I wish to welcome all the visitors who are with us this morning. Thank you for choosing our parish, a very wonderful and loving parish family. For those who are looking for a home, welcome home. After mass, you can register. You won't be disappointed. It's the best home in the deanery. And the mass intention is for all our deacons and their wives who are doing the retreat and for their safe travel back home this evening. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we begin the fifth week in ordinary time, the word of God draws our attention. How do we respond to human suffering and the presence of evil in the world? And to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us acknowledge our sins and ask for God's mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Oh 
let us pray. Keep your family safe, O oh Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of the heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Grant this prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns within the unit of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Job. Job spoke, saying, Is not man's life on earth a drudgery? Are not his days those of hirelings? He is a slave who longs for the shade, a hireling who waits for his wages. So I have been assigned months of misery and troubled nights have been allotted to me. If in bed I say, when shall I arise? Then the night drags on. I am filled with restlessness until the dawn. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle. They come to an end without hope. Remember that my life is like the wind I shall not see happiness again. The word of the Lord. from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I preach the gospel, there is no reason for me to boast, for an obligation has been imposed on me 
and woe to me if I do not preach it. If I do so willingly, I have a recompense. But if unwillingly, then I have been entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my recompense? That when I preach, I offer the gospel free of charge so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. Although I am free in regard to all, I have made myself a slave to all so as to win over as many as possible. To the weak, I became weak. To win over the weak, I have become all things to all, to save at least some. All this I do for the sake of the gospel, so that I too may have a share in it. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. On leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Simon's mother in law lay sick with a fever. They immediately told him about her. He approached, grasped her hand, and helped her up. Then the fever left her, and she waited on them. When it was evening after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill or possessed by demons. The whole town was gathered at the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he drove out many demons, not permitting them to speak because they knew him. Rising very early before dawn, he left and went off to a deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him pursued him, and on finding him said, Everyone is looking for you. He told them, Let us go on to the nearby villages that I may preach there also. For this purpose have I come. So he went into their synagogues preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In life, some of us, we can remember the highest point of our lives, the highest point of our happiness, and also maybe you can remember the lowest point of our lives, when we felt very down in spirit, when we look at everything 
has made the total darkness. And most of the time, it is when we are at the lowest point of our lives that faith is tested. When we are high there, we don't even think about anything. We are happy, we are rejoicing. Everything's going so well until something strikes and then our spirit is low. And what is the strength of our faith at that point? That is the experience of Job. We know the story of Job. He had the highest point of his life. He was blessed with everything in this world. He had wealth, he had wonderful family. And then suddenly something happened. He lost the family, he lost everything. And that's what we have heard today. His faith was tested. Even though he did not give up on God, he complained bitterly. As we have heard him expressing a very deep sense of hopelessness, he was desperate. He was restless. As we, he told us, even he was not looking forward to, to, for it to be a night because that was too much. Everybody sleeping, enjoy the sleep, and he's just their eyes open because he's suffering. There's misery in his life. And Job represents some of us. He represents the human suffering in the world. There are so many people. Even now they are asking, what is the purpose of me continuing to live? Lord, why can't you just take me away from this earth? They are feeling that hopelessness. They are desperate. But what about you and I? If we, fail, we look at that moment, the lowest moment, how do we respond in our lives? How do we respond? What about those people who are suffering today? How are they responding? Where are they going to have help? We look at the story in the gospel. When Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew, he was told the mother-in-law of Simon was sick. She was miserable. There's no one when you get sick you feel happy. You become miserable. You are suffering. And that's the way she was feeling. And people knew where to tend to. They told him about her. And what did Jesus do? He approached her, grasped her hand, and helped her up. That's what our faith must be. When we are experiencing the lowest point of our lives, we know where to tend to. It is our Lord Jesus Christ. Because at that lowest point of your life, that's where faith is. Not when we are rejoicing, we forget. When we are happy, we forget. But it is that point of your lowest point of your life that you find faith. You know where to tend to. And that's the way we can deal with suffering, challenges of life. Job is showing that, yes, there are people out there who cannot even give up to God, but they are complaining. Their life is all misery. Look at the end of the reading. Job saying, I shall not see happiness again. And there are people who are feeling like that. But you and I, we are blessed. We have a faith, and we know where to turn to. Look at the people when they heard Jesus is in the Simon Peter's home. They brought everybody. Can you imagine the whole Greenview, the city of Greenview coming at the door to bring the sick, all those who are suffering, demons, the whole city. Why? Because only him can give life. Only him can relieve suffering. And he responds because Suffering is not what God wants us to have. Because sometimes people want to justify, yes, we can be strong. The justification is that when you are suffering, don't give up your faith. But God does not want anybody to suffer. But suffering is part of our human life. But we need to know how to handle it. Now, 
if it's not you, if it's not me suffering, we know people are suffering in different ways. Illness, death, all kind of uh, suffering. How do we help these people? We help them like the disciples when they came to him. Everyone is looking for you. Where are these go people going to look for Jesus? It's in you, it's in me, because you and I, we have Jesus Christ. And people have to find Jesus Christ in each one of us. Like St. Paul is saying, we have an obligation to become weak for the weak so that we can save the weak. We have an obligation to become everything for all so that we can at least save some. And we do not have to choose because the gospel is for all. St. Paul, Paul is saying, I do this for the sake of the gospel. Even for people we feel they are sinners, St. Paul is saying, become part of these people, at least to win some. Because sometimes we are so quick to judge, quick to criticize. That is not our obligation. Our obligation is about good news. Even to people that we do not feel like they are part of our lives, for example, the pro-choice, we need to be part of them to help them. When St. Paul is saying, I become everything to all so that I can save at least some, he's not saying I have to become a thief to save the thief. No. He's saying I have to approach them. Approach, grasp their hands, help them up. That's what St. Paul is saying. Do not avoid anybody who is different from you approach them at least to save some. That is our obligation. That is our responsibility for the sake of the gospel, not just listening and keep it to ourselves. You and I, we are the Jesus Christ today. Everyone is looking for you. Where are they going to find him? It's you and I. People are suffering out there. How are we responding to them? Some of us, our hands are strong. We have so many blessings. We can approach, grasp hands of the other people and help them to stand and to walk, to have a new life. We are the source of hope. We are the source of faith. We are the source of encouragement. Now, how can we do this? Jesus opened his eyes. He was seeing, he was listening. Sometimes you and I, we close our eyes. We close our ears so that we cannot hear the suffering. Some of us, we have stopped even listening to news. But how can you approach if you don't know what's going on? How can you approach if you cannot see? We need to know what's going on in our communities, in our nation, in the world, so that we'll be able to approach, to grasp the hands of others, and to, the, to help them out. And St. Paul is giving us a powerful example today. You and I, we have an obligation to become weak for the weak, to become all for all, to save some. And as we sang very well in the psalm today, praise the Lord who heals the brokenhearted. And Jesus is coming to us to heal the brokenhearted. Amen. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things we are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and he became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. 
he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom we have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And to God, our Father, with trust and faith, we bring our prayers, our needs, and especially the needs of all those who are suffering. For the church, may we always respond to God's call as instruments of hope and healing that we may relieve the suffering and pain of those burdened with poverty, homelessness, and illness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As we begin the World Interfaith Harmony Week, may the Spirit of God awaken people of faith to understand and respect every religion and work together for unity, peace, and human fraternity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. This coming Thursday is International Day of Prayer against human trafficking. We pray for respect of the dignity of all peoples and an end to the most inhumane, cruel, and heinous crime. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As we observe the Black History Month, we pray for an end to every form of discrimination, hatred, racial injustice, and an honest recognition that all human beings are created in God's image. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for men and women in the military and missionaries who serve, especially in places where there is war, violence, and crime. May they be protected as they bring hope to all who live in fear. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. On this World Cancer Day, we pray for all who live with cancer in its many forms, for their health and comfort, and for their caregivers and all medical researchers seeking treatments and cures of cancer. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the brokenhearted, especially those who grieve the loss of a loved one. May they be comforted knowing that their beloved departed are resting in the eternal peace of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For what else shall we pray for?
hear our prayer. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. Almighty God and Father, those are some of the prayers we have lifted up to you this morning. There are so many more lying deep down the silence of our hearts, and you always respond them, Lord, according to your will. We pray, Lord, that you continue using each one of us as your instruments of hope and healing and support to all those who are crying out to you. Grant all thee through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our song of preparation will be found in our green hymnals on page 502. There is a balm in Gilead. my dear sisters and brothers that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of the church. O 
Lord, our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly really right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of certain praise as we acclaim. give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man and woman in your own image and entrusted the whole world to their care so that in saving you alone their creator, they might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience they had lost your friendship, you did not abandon them to the domain of death. For you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offer them covenants, and through the prophets told them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior, made incarnate by the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor I proclaim the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrow of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruit for those who believe so that bring to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit gracious sanctify these offerings that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery which himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come, for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice, filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. 
do this in memory of me. celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O oh Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church, and the grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now, or for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, Jacques, our Bishop, and the order of bishops, or the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heaven inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom, there with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow the world, all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and found by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. But deliver us. deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Gracious grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who say to your apostles, peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and the graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And now let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
especially at the lowest point of our lives and to pray for the suffering of others. Let us pray. O oh God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. May you please be seated for a few announcements. Hi, I'm Rita O'Rourke, and I just registered for the Women's Bible Study. Um, so check out the bulletin. It's going to be on Thursday morning starting on the 15th. Now, some of you have met, may never have been in a Bible or women's Bible study before. It might be a little bit nervous, like, are they going to ask me a bunch of questions? I don't know. Uh, or do I have to find a sp specific verse in the Bible? Relax. It's not like that at all. Um, we're going to study a little, laugh a little, and have fellowship with other women in the church. So if you can make it, it's going to be worth registering. Good morning, and I'm a promo promoter of Bible study, so please sign up. I'm Mary Ann Turner with the Women's Council, and we're doing our yearly sale of raffle tickets for a Valentine basket. Now, I brought the bulletin in here for you to envision <laughs> a great big basket worth about $300. It will be on display next week, but unfortunately, it's not here today. But I am out in the lobby, $5 a ticket. The drawing will be after the 12 o'clock mass next Sunday. 
So get a ticket and win your sweetie a wonderful basket that I'm sure has wine in it. I don't have anything as exciting as wine. <laughs> but uh, again, I want to thank you for your support of our Catholic Schools Week fundraiser. Just to give you a little glimpse into where this fundraiser came from, as you may or may not know, our gala, which is traditionally held every year, was pushed off from um, spring until next fall. So it'll be held in September of this year, so get that on your calendar. September 7th, I think, I hear is the date. Um, so we're doing a couple fundraisers throughout the year to make up for that fundraising money that is not coming in because of the gala. So we had our Giving Tuesday in November, Catholic Schools Week uh, collection this week, and then we'll have something in the spring for you as well. So again, thank you so much. We'll be out in the lobby collecting those envelopes as you leave today. The playground is finished if you want to take a look. Well, I'm going to bring Jay up to talk about the Super Bowl. And I'm not really a Panthers fan. <laughs> I'm not. But Jay said, bring a jersey, somebody worse than the Cowboys. <laughs> I hope your ribs are burnt next Saturday, <laughs> Sunday. Good morning, everybody. That's two days in a row. Father gave me a hard time after Mass last night. He goes, that team is not even in the Super Bowl. Why are you wearing that jersey? Yeah. All right. One week from today is Super Sunday. So we hope all of you will come and sign up. We've got a large crowd coming. We're going to do it in the gym. It's in the bulletin, QR code, or right out here in the lobby. You can sign up. Lots of food, lots of beverages, lots of fun. Come and fellowship. Even if you don't like football, we're going to have a good time. Lots of activities. Also, in the social hall, when you go get breakfast, we are selling additional boards of squares. We sold out last week, much to my surprise, but we're Catholic and we like to do those kinds of things. So come and sign up, buy squares, have some fun, and hopefully we'll see everybody next week. Come as you are. If you want to bring a dessert, that's fine. If you want to bring some type of appetizer, That'll work too. Hope to see everybody. Come in fellowship. Thank you. Okay, one last thing. Don't forget about fish fry coming up beginning Lent and our free uh, Ash Wednesday fish fry supper after uh, Ash Wednesday Mass next Wednesday. So uh, thank you. Oh, and by the way, we have a breakfast in the social hall. Good morning. So last Sunday after Mass, somebody asked me, Father, are you going to watch football? I said, well, I don't have much interest. I don't understand it. As you know, I'm a soccer player. Uh, but she told me her team. So I said, I'm going to watch. And guess what? The Chiefs won. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that was my blessing to her. We won. <laughs> Uh, I just want to thank you again for those who are signing up uh, for the adoration of the Blessed Sacrament on Fridays. Uh, please do so after Mass. Sign up. It's going so well. It's a wonderful prayer. And especially as we are going into the Lenten season, uh, you need to be part of this one-hour prayer before the Blessed Sacrament. So many blessings come from all graces. So please sign up uh, in the lobby for Eucharistic Ministers. Your sign-up sheet, it's in the uh, sacristy, so please continue to do so. But also read the bulletin. There will be some changes of time about that because of the Station of the Cross coming up in the next few uh, couple of weeks. So please read that information. Uh, those who are still keeping the dry palm branches in your homes, we need them here uh, so that we can bend them to be ready for Ash Wednesday. And also next week, it will be a kickoff Sunday for Catholic Appeal of South Carolina. Formerly, it was uh, Bishop's Annual Appeal. Uh, so please, let's participate. This is how we respond to human suffering. So many people need our help. So please participate in this wonderful uh, mission of our diocese. We are the diocese. And saying so, next week, we are supposed to collect today uh, the Catholic Annual Appeal 
uh, uh, collection, but we'll do it next week when we do the kickoff uh, Sunday or uh, the, the cask. So please be part of this. Whatever contribution you can make, even a dollar, it goes a long way to help the needs of our diocese. Birthdays, anniversaries. I just was asked to remind everybody, and I forgot to clean out the mailboxes. They're going to be emptying those. We have a uh, birthday in the choir, uh, Cal Hall. Happy birthday to Cal. <laughs> My name is Britton. I'm new here. I'm 10 years old. <laughs> Britton joined our family on Monday, so please play, pray for us as he stays with us for a little while. Uh, McKenna turns one this week. Oh. <laughs> May we please stand? The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth to love and save the Lord and all his people. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. We end Mass in our green hymnals on page 499. God has smiled on me. God has smiled on me, he has set me free, oh, God has smiled on me, he's been good to me, God has God has smiled on me. He has set me free. God has smiled on me. He's made good to me. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Oh, God has God has smiled on me. He has set me free. Oh, God has. Smiled on me, he's been good to me. Oh, God has, God has smiled on me, he has set me free. Oh, God has smiled on me, he's been good, he's been good, God's been good, he's been God's been good to me. God's been good to me. All day long, he's good. He's been 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 